Greetings and welcome to Raven's Roost Forge. This is Tate, your host, and today we're going to be looking at some homebrew quenching experiments. Let's get started. So really the point of this experiment was to see if I could get an optimal hardness in a water quench steel using vegetable oil. And if not, could I come up with any kind of homebrew alternatives that worked better without having to pony up the dough to buy something expensive like Parks 50 oil. The initial experiment was to compare 100% vegetable oil versus mixtures of vegetable oil and biodiesel. So I made about three liters of biodiesel out of some vegetable oil that I had on hand. And this initial sequence shows me mixing up the uh, vegetable oil and the biodiesel. What I did was I uh, experimented with 75% biodiesel and 25% vegetable oil. And then I also did the opposite, 25% biodiesel and 75% vegetable oil. And then I compared that to 100% vegetable oil and plain water. I decided to experiment with biodiesel because it's a lot lower viscosity than pure vegetable oil and the two mix together well. Here I'm just warming up the mixture in a chafing dish with a couple of sterno canisters underneath. The steel for the initial experiment is a piece of a Nicholson file that's made in the USA. This was an old file that was worn out and so I'm cutting it into three pieces. These are typically made of a good quality water hardening steel. I gave my best shot at keeping the experiment under the most controlled and precise conditions that I could. I preheated the forge to a uniform temperature and I used a stainless steel baffle shown here this will protect the steel from direct contact with the flame and keep the temperature much more uniform. I'm also using a thermocouple in the back opening of the forge in order to try to maintain the most precise temperature that I can. While I was waiting for the forge to fully come up to temperature, I went ahead and cleaned up all of the little experimental coupons with the belt grinder just to take off the file teeth to make sure there's no stress risers and that we had bare clean metal. My goal was to perform the experiment at 1475 degrees Fahrenheit or 800 degrees Celsius and you can see we're just about up to temperature. So I went ahead and added the coupons into the forge and I'm going to go ahead and let it come up to temperature and then I'm going to let the pieces soak for five minutes. While those are coming up to temperature, I went ahead and checked the temperature on all of my quenching media. 140 degrees on the pure vegetable oil. I didn't try to heat up the biodiesel mixture as much. I kept that around 100 because it's already really low viscosity. And then 81 degrees for the water quench. So now you can see that we're fully up to temperature, 1475 Fahrenheit. Now we're just going to soak the steel for 5 minutes to make sure that it's fully austenitized. We're maintaining a good stable temperature. It's only climbed up to 1478. That's excellent. And now we're ready to quench. I started with the water quench and then I went on to the uh, vegetable oil quench and then the biodiesel quench. You'll see here in a moment that the biodiesel quench smoked for a really long time. I actually cut it off so that it wasn't so boring to watch but uh, that doesn't bode very well for my experimental results. This was the 75% biodiesel, 25% vegetable oil. I do have results for the 25% biodiesel, 75% vegetable oil, but I didn't film that particular experiment. And you can see that we maintained a stable temperature even while I was pulling the coupons out of the forge. So now we've got to go through the cleanup process again Got to make sure that all of the scale is uh, completely cleaned off and that we've got a clean, flat, uniform surface on both sides. So what I'm doing here is going through grit levels on the belt sander. I started with, I think, a 50 grit ceramic belt 
and then I went to a 120 grit zirconia belt and then you'll see in just a moment I'm going to switch it out for a 220 aluminum oxide belt and that's going to be where I'll stop. In order to do Rockwell hardness testing you need a good surface finish in order to get accurate and repeatable results. The hardness tester that I'll be using is a Really brand tester. I believe it's pronounced Really. This is a portable tester. I think that Wilson still makes one very similar to this, but they're really expensive new. Here I'm just testing the calibration to make sure that it's within spec, and I'm using an HRA testing block. We're actually testing in HRA scale and then converting to HRC because this particular unit uh, reads more accurately in the HRA scale. So I went ahead and tested all the blocks in two places and as long as they were within less than one point difference I went ahead and just averaged the two tests. If they disagreed by more than one point I did a third and then averaged that. So what we got was 67.5 on the water quench, 48 on the vegetable oil quench, and then 37 on the biodiesel 75%. And then off camera I did the 25% biodiesel and I got an average of 39 Rockwell. So we didn't get full hardness for anything other than the water. We didn't even get near full hardness for the other experiments. I've done better in the past with really thin cross sections using vegetable oil, but based on these results I can't really recommend it. And the biodiesel was a complete fail. The hardness was actually lower than in the pure vegetable oil experiment. Any advantage gained by lowering the viscosity I think was washed out by the fact that biodiesel has a lower boiling and flash point. Of course we couldn't leave well enough alone right there. So I went back and started another round of experiments with some different materials. This is 1095 and then I'm going to be using mineral oil and mixtures of mineral oil and kerosene to see if we can get some better results. I tried to match the previous experiment as closely as possible so I won't bore you with the footage. This time we've got four trials 100% mineral oil, 10% kerosene, 25% kerosene, and then water. You can see I tried to get everything at a uniform 130 degrees Fahrenheit as closely as I could and then the water is still at 81 degrees. So we're gonna quench one after the other. That's the water. And then the various mixtures. I do have them marked on the outside of the bucket, but from this vantage, I'm not sure which is which. And then you can see on this final one, I dropped it so I couldn't agitate it. So what I did was I made sure that the temperature was okay and then I went back and reheated and then quenched it properly. So there's our four coupons ready to get tested and the testing procedure was the same. And then this was the results. The water quench was 65 Rockwell, so just a little bit softer than the other. 100% mineral oil was 60 Rockwell. And then the 90% uh, mineral oil, 10% kerosene was 59 Rockwell. And then the 75% mineral oil and 25% kerosene was 48 Rockwell. So again, we only got full hardness with the water quench. The 100% mineral oil was close to full hardness at 60 HRC. So if you're not going to use water and you don't want to pony up the dough for something like Parks 50, then 100% mineral oil might be your best bet. It was these experiments that caused me to switch to the double quench method when I did the blacksmith knife in the previous video. In the double quench method, you quench briefly in water and then finish the quench in oil. This gives you full hardness but much less risk of warping or cracking. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time and happy forging.